Alright, so it's getting about that time of the year, fall of the year, uh, getting ready to cook a Brunswick stew. So uh, we need to check and make sure our cast iron is uh, ready to go. Now you see online where there's a lot of people telling you to just uh, take your cast iron and uh, put it into the stove. But what if it's too big? What if you have a great big cast iron pot? What if it won't fit into the stove? Well, what do you do then? Anyway, I got to thinking one night and this is pretty much what I came up with. The concept is actually pretty simple. Just flip your pot right upside down. Take you a short length of chain. And then you can attach it to one side of the pot, going across the bottom, and attach it to your handle on the other side of the pot, like so. Now take another length of chain and attach it to this piece in the center. Attach the other end to a hoist or whatever you have to keep it suspended. You'll be able to lift it up and put your gas burner underneath the bottom and then heat it just like you would if you were putting it in your stove. But keep in mind, now this is for outdoor use only, just outside. Okay. So what we have here, we've got my 20 gallon pot, and we've got my 4 gallon pot. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and season this really big one for you, just to demonstrate how that's done. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, first of all, I'm going to take a kind of a generic um, shortening. Um, there's a lot of controversy about what to use, whether to use lard or shortening or olive oil, canola oil and all that stuff. I'm not here to discuss all that. I just want to show you the technique. You can decide whichever oil you want to use. There's commercial grades out there that you can buy online and you're welcome to do that, but you can use this technique with any of those oils. I will talk a little bit about um, um, you know, some of the effects once we get this, once I get this pot where I want it, where I can show it to you. I will show that to you, but just uh, whatever, whatever oil, grease, Whatever you want to use, that, that's completely up to you. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take a generic shortening and I'm going to grease the inside of this pan. And you just want to put a really light coat everywhere in here. And now you've got the inside of the pot completely greased. Okay, this is a good even coat all the way around. So now you want to take and turn this pot upside down. Be careful. Turn it this way. So I'm gonna run a coat of grease right here because I'm gonna wrap this chain right here. Oh. Okay. We had it greased along where that chain's gonna sit. I've got this hooked up where it won't move. Now we're gonna suspend it right over here. So uh, I'll stand by. One minute. All right. Too bad. So you can see I've got it suspended above my burner. And uh, we're going to heat this thing up. But first of all, I'm going to finish coating the outside of this. And the reason I've done this is because it's kind of hard to manage if you're by yourself. You really should try to get uh, uh, two people to try to manage these. but. You see, uh, I've got it hanging here. I'm gonna finish freezing the outside of it, and then we're gonna fire up the uh, we're gonna fire up the burner. All right, I've got it on. I don't put it on a really hard burn. Just put it about a medium uh, flame. Um, so let's, let's watch you since this thing get hot. Right now the average temperature is 74 degrees. Okay. So we're getting temperature reading off the pot already. 118 degrees. This is not an expensive thermometer so 
I'm not sure how much faith I put in. Okay, you can see all the lard is already melted down. It's starting to get a little bit harder. We'll take a sample. About 316 degrees. You can see that. 316. So uh, we're just going to bring it on up to the uh, smoke point and uh, go from there. That's 360 degrees. So you want to get to. Uh, that smoke point doesn't matter which uh, oil that you use but you want to get to that smoke point because that's the point at which you start causing the polymerization which is when it bonds with the cast iron so I'm gonna let this continue to go on up somewhere around 400 degrees and we'll watch it smoke just slightly until it completely quits smoking Okay, smoking pretty good. Barely see it. We got just a little breeze out here today, but everything on it is looking pretty good. And one reason I hate to, would even hate to do this in the kitchen in the stove if uh, I could is because this is the breakdown of that oil, and that's breaking down a lot of the carcinogenics and everything else. So if you are doing this in your stove, you know, if your pot is small enough, Make sure you turn a vent hood or something on and exhaust that kitchen because this stuff's not good for you. Okay, so it's done been about, I'd say about 35 minutes. As you can see, very little smoke coming off of it right now, if any. And um, So what we're going to do right now, because it's past that point, I'm going to give it a good 10 or 15 more minutes. You know, past the point when it quits smoking, and uh, then we're gonna shut the gas off. So you wait till it quits smoking, and then, like I say, it's good for good measure. Go ahead and give it about 10 or 15 more minutes, and uh, before you shut your gas off. Okay, so there we have it. You can see there's no smoke coming off of this thing at all at this point. It's good and hot. And um, this whole process took about an hour. So um, anyway, I'm gonna leave this one up, and I'm gonna season it a couple more times. So uh, let's just take a look. Let's take a look at this pot right here. So this pot is one I've done several times, and you can see how dark it's gotten. I mean, it's just as slick as it can be, and I think I've probably done this one several times and that's the coat it has and I've actually used this pot <clears throat> I don't know maybe at least five or six times since then and it is there's no sticky surface no whatsoever and it's the exact same method that I use for uh, that pot right there okay so that's going to conclude my video on uh, seasoning the uh, cast iron pot uh, I like to reiterate that uh, any kind of Whatever you use, and I'm not um, supporting any kind of uh, product or or whether you should use lard or uh, you know a shortening or whatever. Use whatever you want to use, but take in consideration what those smoke points are, and then um, just like you would uh, season cast iron in, in the stove, go through that same process. I'm just trying to point out a, a method to where uh, to where you can get it done. So, uh, anyway, this is Cohort 227, and uh, that's seasoning the uh, cast iron pot. So, uh, we'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm.